everybody from Kim Kardashian to my garbage man is taking GLP-1 agonists. And they're all losing weight and they're all getting their diabetes better and they're all doing Kumbaya great without ever changing anything. So, um, you know, why the hell should I struggle and give up my carbohydrates if I can eat a bit less and lose weight? And that is a very, very popular and important mentality um, to alter our thinking. And I don't want to scare people. I use GLP-1s a ton. I love them. But they need to be put into perspective as tools that we use on a journey rather than defining the journey itself. They're excellent drugs. And I don't think there are people in our community that are skeptical about them relative to all the other metabolic health issues that we have from the pathway that creates obesity. They are magic. They are miracle drugs. But their purpose is to correct insulin resistance and to induce weight loss. They do not in any way, shape or form alter behavior. And without changing the behavior that caused the excess weight in the first place, it is it is unsustainable to keep the weight off long term, on or off the medication. And we're finding a lot of people who a few months later are, it's not working for me. And what do we do? We up the dose. And as you go higher on the dose, you get complications. So uh, my talk will be to discuss weight loss strategies from diets through keto, through GLP-1s, through surgery in different categories. Why should I attend this conference and why should I intend in, attend in person? First and foremost, try to attend. There's value to the content no matter what. Ideally, it should be in person. But if either the cost or the travel or the ability to be there is prohibitive, it is far more important that you are exposed to the personalities, the people, and the science that gets discussed at, the, at, this, uh, at this conference. And this, this particular conference is going to be one of the most impactful conferences because it is the first major conference that's going to happen after the release of our textbook called Ketogenics. And many of the authors, that's the Nutrition Network uh, uh, um, textbook, scientifically based textbook that we've all authored. And a lot of the transformation of these meetings, a lot of them are kumbaya, here's how I did it. Uh, you know, follow me because I'm doing this myself. And that was great in the rookie stages of the evolution of a ketogenic movement. Um, over the last one or two meetings, this particular meeting has evolved to being a highly science-based meeting. And I think that there's a big separation of beliefs that are sometimes erroneous and the hardcore knowledge that we've developed over time. And um, there's so many misbeliefs that, that, that get people going. So attending this conference online or in person is hugely beneficial in terms of understanding that science and understanding that this, this meeting is becoming more and more science-based rather than anecdote-based. Even in my own arena of carb addiction, we have to be more scientific rather than um, anecdotal about what we're doing. To attend it in person is that the format of the meeting is less and less information before we spent hours on stage talking and having discussions. But because there's so much information and so many people that, that are excellent speakers, we're shortening that format. We're having people be more goal-directed in singular messaging. and But that's the skeleton. There's a lot of flesh added to that. And if you, before, after the meeting, at lunch, at dinner, can connect with that speaker who's speaking on a salient topic and go to them, every one of us loves chatting with people. And it's the value of attending the meeting in person is to get those little kernels of flesh that add to the skeleton of the talk. And you meet those folks, you can question them. The hardest questions are the nicest questions for me. I love meeting people and inspiring them, motivating them. So one of the things that we promote very heavily in the ketogenic space is a concept called empathetic human connection, where human connections, um, that require trust and vulnerability are some of the healthiest ways to grow as a person, to build up self-esteem, self-confidence, self-respect. 
the challenge in our ketogenic space is that there's so much antagonism to what we do, it's very difficult to find friendlies. Your cardiologist is not friendly. Your diabetic endocrinologist is not friendly. Uh, nobody's friendly to what we're doing. So you guard it and you, you, you protect yourself from telling people what you're doing dietarily, or you're almost embarrassed. The beauty about this community is everybody's doing the same. Number one, we're all humble. We are all completely trustworthy in that what we're doing is the same as what you're doing. So we don't, you don't have to start to explain to me why you're on a ketogenic diet. In, we start our discussion is, okay, I love what you're doing. How do we tweak it to be better? How do we answer specific questions within the space rather than defending the space? And it is a great place to have camaraderie, to have kinship that where you can be vulnerable saying, hey, I'm fat. I'm in keto. I need to be helped. I'm diabetic. I'm keto. I need to be helped as opposed to being protective of that. So the ability to be vulnerable in this community in person is an enormous reason why we come to these meetings, apart from the science, apart from the spectatorship, apart from meeting people, is making deep, meaningful connections, not only with the speakers, but with other guests, with other members coming in and forming groups of kindred spirits. We've taken bits of every specialty out there from ophthalmology to gynecology to endocrinology. And every one of those, in part, a fraction of what they do concerns something called metabolic health. And metabolic health is the, the treatment and prevention of diseases uh, that come from our diet, from what we eat and drink, and from our genetic uh, hormonal metabolism uh, issues. And we are establishing as a fledgling new specialty in healthcare, and I believe probably the most important specialty because it covers every organ from your hair to your toenails. And it also covers the commonest cause of death in this country, which is cardiovascular disease. So um, by volume and pretty much everybody in this country is going to be affected by metabolic health issues. And for the first time, we're creating a specialty of metabolic health. Uh, we have the science, we have the textbook, we have the bricks and mortar practitioners, but they were all fractionated. They were all mom and pops, like grains of sand on a beach, all doing well, but all separate. SMHP is a unifying organization that is a scientific practitioner-based organization, a collection of everybody practicing in their own little places. But we become this collective, this, this block of proactive people that can now become a rock and a rock when it falls on it on the ground makes a hell of a lot more noise than a, than a grain of sand so we are an smhp is an advocacy a unity a training an educational organization but mostly a representative organization of the best metabolic strategies out there for the healthiest people and we then become a block that can go up against the standard American diet folks, the politicians, the pharmaceutical companies that are promoting their own interests that leverage ill health to make wealth. 